Hey folks, I'm Anchor, and I hope you're having a fantastic week. Today is part two of my rigging series with this character that I have been working on named Screamer. Um, last video, I did the entire turnaround of this character as well as showing you some of the concept art that I was making. Um, and this video, I'll be showing you how I did the shapes breakdown of this character to get started with rigging, as well as the most important part, um, both setting up the node view and making, eventually, the circle rig. So this is what the circle rig looks like on Screamer. Get rid of that shapes breakdown. This is what we're going to be left with at the end of this video after I show you all the process work that got here. Um, and this one looks really scary and complicated, but I promise it's not. It is definitely something you all can do. Um, I can show you the other one that I have. This is this is Vernon, the first puppet that I made, and this is his circle rig. So essentially what we're doing is just, um, after we do the shapes breakdown, is putting these circle joints in every joint <laughs> that we're going to be making. And the point of them is to have a set location for all the pivots that our joints are going to be moving from. So as we go from view to view, we already have set pivots for every body part so that we can go directly into vectoring artwork and not have to worry about moving those pivots around when we're actively making the artwork. All the hard work is done right here and we don't have to worry about it anymore. So let's just get right into how I started making, making Screamer over here. Here we go, tackling the shapes breakdown. First thing you're gonna wanna do is make a million new colors in your palette menu. I recommend you right click your palette and select swatches so that you can view them stacked like this. You're gonna want a ton of colors to choose from. Every shape that you make is going to represent a body part and you're gonna want a unique color for each one. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. Here I started with the head, but I'm not putting too much thought into it right now because I'm going to set aside time to work on the head by itself after I finish rigging the body. What I'm really focusing on are the circle joints, the overlapping shapes that are going to make up the body and legs. I chose to have the neck and chest as this long piece because I know I'm going to be using a curve deformer for this shape later on. Most of the time torsos are animated with curve deformers because it's a natural way to bend from the waist. It's important to keep in mind that the cleaner you make your circle joints now, um, like most parts of this process, the easier it'll be for yourself later. Um, this is good to keep in mind with the legs. I went through a lot of different processes with the legs. Um, I eventually realized that the front legs were not going to work the way I broke them down initially, as I added too many joints on accident. But, you know, I wouldn't have realized if I didn't test my rig. This is wildly important, so listen up. The way that we test a breakdown is super easy, and it's the reason why we made a friggin' bajillion colors when we were initially starting this. Um, there's this really nifty tool in the selection. It's right underneath the normal select arrow, select by color. And this is super awesome because this enables us to literally select individual pieces of our puppet that are just one color instead of having to go in and somehow grab all of these pieces without somehow, you know, touching a different color or a different line. Um, so if we just go to select by color, grab that. And what's great as well about this is that you can grab multiple colors at the same time by just shift clicking other parts of your puppet. So if I wanted to grab, say, this whole leg, or at least most of it, I can shift click and grab all of those and the ankle and it's a little bit finicky but there we go got all of it and now i can move oh, other important thing is that this is the pivot point and we're just going to move that generally to the spot that we want it to be in and then you know we can mess around with it and start seeing if what we're going to be rigging actually functions the way that we want it to that go back to where it was and yeah you're just going to want to do that to every single part of this of this body rig that you've made um test out shapes that 
you think are gonna work, test them out. Even if you're like, ah, I don't know if that's gonna work, just try it and see if it functions. All right, super quick, node view basics, kinda. Um, here's your drawing layer. Um, it's the same thing that's in your timeline, just displayed here. We call them TVGs. Um, and anything you draw in here is going to be displayed in this little thing. You can click this little arrow to pop up a thumbnail preview and look at what is in the drawing layer. Um, you can make a bunch of these, as many as you want, of course, because it's just connected to your timeline. Um, and if I draw something else in here, crap, you'll see that it's displaying separately, but then these cables, that's what these are called, these cables are running down into our composite. The composite is combining all of your layers that you have in your timeline into one camera view. So anything that's within this camera view and you can view exactly what's in it just by clicking this camera mask right here and you can see what will be rendered out. Um, but that's what's being shown in your composite. And simply the right node and the display node are the settings that are used to eventually render out your um, images that are in your timeline. So the right node does all of those settings um, and you can make image sequences here. Um, you can designate the image format and the color. You can either have grayscale color or um, transparency options. That's what the right node is. And the display node is displaying everything running into it in the camera view. And that's what the right node uses to render out your final images. But we're going to want to know a few more things before we actually go into starting our circle rig. Um, here in this little drop down menu, this is where a lot of your options for the node view are, and especially here in insert at the bottom of this list is something called a backdrop. A backdrop is important because it is what you use to group all of your layers in the node view together to make everything, you know, compact and clean and easily accessible. Um, we're going to end up with so many drawing layers in our timeline that trying to make this look nice is going to be impossible. So all of that organization is going to happen in the node view. So we can rename these. Um, and we can color them and it just makes it really easy to organize everything that's in here. Um, another important thing about this is that something that we can do is um, say we have a ton of cables going on and they're going everywhere and it's and it's just a mess. Something that you can do is have a composite running into a composite. So if I just click enter this brings up a little drop down type composite. Here we are. We have our composite here. What we can actually do is go into our settings. Well, what we first want to do is click this little box and have the mode set as pass through. That's incredibly important because we need these drawing layers to still be mainly going into this composite. We just want them to be more organized and pass through a different one to get there. So what we can do is unlink these and you'll see that they disappear in your camera view. Don't freak out. All you need to do is connect them up to this composite and then you can have that running into your main composite. And you can ha do this as many times as you want. You can have a composite running into a composite, running into a composite, da 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 da, -da all that. Um, and the third organization thing that is super important is waypoints. So if you go into the center of a cable, there will always be an automatic waypoint that you can set without having to add any additional ones. And you can set that wherever you want. I like to make them, you know, nice and straight. Um, but if you want to add additional ones to make them even more organized, you can just right click the cable click create waypoint and move that wherever you want it to. So that is the essentials of how we're going to be organizing the node view once things start getting a little bit more crazy. The third thing that we're going to be learning is pegs. So 
when you're animating a puppet in Toon Boom, you are gonna be moving all of these drawing layers around because that's how we move the puppet. So say I have a keyframe on this first frame and then a keyframe on this fifth frame, and I just move this to the side, you'll think, oh, well, there we are, already animating it. But the problem with this is that we are permanently affecting our original drawing that's on this drawing layer, and we don't want that to happen. We want to animate this object without it actually being permanently affected by anything. And the way that we do that is with pegs. Um, so I just get rid of that. What you do is you go into your node view, and the easiest way to do this is just to click Control P. And you'll see that brings up a new little node, and this is your peg. It renames it for you, it's really great. Um, you can also get a peg by clicking enter and typing peg, and it'll also come up, but it's just easier to go to your drawing layer itself and click control P. Um, and how we use this is the exact same way that we were doing it before on the drawing layer. Make a new keyframe, move it somewhere, and then there we are. This is exactly what we want, because now we have a drawing peg that is animating, but our original artwork is left alone. But this isn't the final step. There's a few other things that we want to do in the node view to make sure that we can never accidentally put a keyframe on a drawing layer, because that is such a pain to try and fix later on, and we just want to avoid that at all costs. The way that we do that is that you can go into the node view and click this little yellow box and go down to drawing pivot. And instead of having it as apply embedded pivot on drawing layer, click the little drop down and do apply embedded pivot on parent peg. So what this does is that instead of, if you accidentally go into your node view and click on your drawing and try and move it, instead of applying what it would usually do and put a keyframe on the drawing layer, It'll apply it to the peg that it's attached to, the parent peg that it's attached to. The other thing we want to avoid is when we have a ton of drawing layers and pegs in our timeline, and we want to go through and add um, a column of keys to everything we see here. If we were to go here and then shift click down and then click add keyframe, you'll see that it applies them on the pegs, but it also applies them on the drawing layers, and we really don't want that to happen. So, I'm gonna go back. There's a really easy fix for this. Just go into your um, properties of your drawing, and then from transformation to over is controls, and you'll see animate, animate using animation tools, and you're gonna see that it's checked, uncheck it, close it, um, I'll do that for this one too. Uncheck it, close it. And if I do the same thing, you'll see it only applies the keyframe now to our pegs. And that's what we want. Awesome. Um, and you're probably saying, well, oh dear lord, do I have to go into every property of these drawing layers? Go through, click, apply the parent peg, and then go to controls and check, uncheck that and have to do that a million times over for as many body parts as you have? Thank God, no you don't. Um, so if I just put everything back the way it was originally, if I do drawing layer, drawing layer, turn back on, turn that back on, you can apply those settings super quick, super easy. All you need to do is select both of these and go up into here. This little tool is select or set properties on many layers. And when you click that, it'll bring up this little screen um, and you'll see that it has two of the settings that we need. Use embedded pivot, parent peg, and animate using animation tools off. When you click okay, you'll see that those settings have been applied to every drawing layer that you selected in the node view. 
So after learning those node view tools, this part of the time lapse will make a little more sense. What I did was create a drawing layer for every body part that I made a breakdown shape for. The way I named the legs is with near and far. I learned this just because it's a more um, definitive way of knowing where a body part is than using left and right. Um, it just makes it easier for the animators. Um, and after I created those layers, I then organized them by a section of the body and tidied up my node view a little bit, adding backdrops and pass-through composites, as well as eventually adding a peg to every drawing layer. Now I'm finally doing the circle rig. It's pretty simple. All I'm doing is pressing down the shift key and dragging out a perfect circle using the circle tool and creating the crosshairs by using the line tool. Make sure that the magnet is turned on in your tool properties so that you can perfectly split the circle into quarters. The center of the crosshair is going to be where we're placing the permanent pivot point. I started with the side view because it was the easiest for this character, but for my pedal characters, I do recommend starting with the front view. Um, anyway, but after I finish the side view, this is when you're going to start permanently placing your pivots. So to permanently place your pivot, you're just going to want to click the translate button at the top of the toolbar. And from here, you can permanently adjust the pivot by selecting the center of it and moving it to where you want it to be. With the pivots placed, now I can set up my timeline to start translating the circles across the eight views that I have. I just extended the exposure of each drawing layer and clicked the duplicate drawing option to give myself six unique circles in the drawing substitutions window. I recommend you go through each drawing layer and make sure that the drawing substitution number lines up with the frame that you're on. Um, I also went ahead and applied columns of keyframes to each frame of this turnaround You'll need to do this so that each view, you can move your circles without interpolation affecting it at all. All right, here we are. Where we started this video is exactly where we're ending it. Um, this is the final circle rig, and now you guys know how to make it. Um, in the next video, it's going to be all vector art. So finally, we're going to be turning these circles into actual, you know, drawn body parts that we can animate with. I was super stoked about the reception of my last video. I'm, I'm glad you guys liked it so much. Um, and I'm really glad it was useful. Um, I'm hoping that the rest of the series proves to be equally useful to you all. Yeah. I don't know how to end this video. Get out of here. Scram. Gah.